whenever there's a rise, there's always a fall. And since the past four episodes have talked about the rise of the game series, it's about time we talk about its descent. While the decline of SimCity can be attested to more than just one game, that decline is certainly presented no more clearly than it is in SimCity societies. On June 5, 2007, Tilted Mill Entertainment announced that it would be developing the newest addition to the SimCity series, SimCity Societies. This obviously meant that Maxis would not be working on the game, but more specifically, this would be the first game that wouldn't have Will Wright working on it either. Even though he hadn't been the head developer for either SimCity 3000 or 4, he was still a part of the team. In 2004, he had announced that Maxis would be working in a new direction for SimCity after the game had, in his own words, gotten a little complicated for people who had never played SimCity. Which, honestly, is a fair assessment. Although it is unclear what happened between then and Tilted Mill taking over, what we do know is that Wright and Maxis were working on something else. That being Maxis's game, Spore. Will Wright had always been a fan of space travel and space colonization. Well, this dream of colonization was brought to fruition with Spore, where you take control of an alien species that you craft as you take it through its various stages in evolution until it is, eventually, a spacefaring species. Now, I know Spore has absolutely nothing to do with SimCity, but the reason I'm talking about it is that I want you to understand why Maxis had nothing to do with the development of SimCity, and how that affected the development of SimCity societies. Tilted Mill Entertainment, on the other hand, is a bit of an enigma. A quick search shows little to no usable information, with its website being down and its Wikipedia page being very short. I can tell that they were a small company that had created a handful of games, although only two of those games were before SimCity societies. And while nothing seems to indicate the company has gone under, the fact that their website is down and that their Facebook hasn't had a new post since 2016 doesn't bode well for them. Their last post was about their next game, Medieval Mayor, which has been stuck in development hell since 2013. Oh wait, Jill Bilski, I hope I'm saying that right, said in early 2020, I keep checking just in case, but... And Tilted Mill responded with, You and me both, brother. Right at the end of 2020. Is Tilted Mill still alive? Kind of, they say in the replies. Honestly, I don't know what to make of this. Anyways, let's move on. SimCity Societies was released in November of 2007, to actually not terrible reviews. I mean, these aren't good, but I wouldn't classify them as bad either. See, and that's what the problem this game had. The game wasn't bad. I played it when I was a kid, and I enjoyed it. I got the Destination Expansion Pack later on, and that was fun too, with it adding tourism to the mix. But at the end of the day, SimCity societies just didn't feel like SimCity. Each building was placed individually, there was a slightly bizarre aspect to it where you had to balance societal values which didn't really affect society, it was just a system where each building either used or gave points to a specific societal value and you had to keep them all from being negative so your city could keep running. The weirdest part of the game was that, originally, there was no maintenance cost on anything. Buildings, roads, power plants, none of them cost any sort of maintenance. So you basically just kept accumulating money and built new buildings while trying to balance people's happiness and societal values. Eventually, they did patch the game to add in maintenance costs, which adds more difficulty and, dare I say, fun to the game, but it still just felt like such a departure from the series. The biggest criticism, though, both back then and now, is just how poorly the game runs. When I used to play this game as a kid on my basic desktop running Windows Vista, I just thought that my computer couldn't handle everything going on in the game after a while. However, even running it on my powerful modern PC, 
it still chugs after playing for a while. The game just isn't optimized, and that's something that really holds it back. It's hard to have a game with infinite replayability if you feel like you cannot keep playing it after less than halfway filling a map, or else it'll start running at 2 frames a second. That all being said, I did still have some fond memories of playing this game, even if they were muted in comparison to the last two entries. So let's see how it holds up today. Alright, welcome to SimCity Societies, specifically Destinations. So let's go ahead and start up a new game. So this is not the original SimCity Societies that I played back when I was a kid. That all that save file information and stuff is on my old computer. I've actually played a fair bit of this and I got a lot of the medals, which was a neat little addition to kind of a award achievements and they have trophies for building cities to certain requirements. But if you just want to start a new city, then just go through there. Two things that I definitely want to look for while playing this is the reasons that it was widely criticized at the time that it was released. The biggest things was the fact that it was too simplified the fact that you're placing buildings instead of zones and it's just very simplistic and then the fact that it ran like crap back in the day i remember having some issues on my computer back in the day and i've had some issues since then i'm not too uh confident in its ability but i guess we shall see Um, oh, it's already starting to lag a little bit. And see, my computer is pretty, you know, top of the line, I would say. Especially for a game that was made in 2008. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, when you look up, it really just... There you go. Just <laughs> don't look up too much. So, anyways, let's go ahead and just start working on our city. The biggest thing about the simplistic nature of this game is the fact that you have a lot fewer options when it comes to things. Uh, you have country roads and you have regular roads, but you don't have highways, you don't have one-way streets, you don't have uh, really any of the other options that you had in previous SimCity games. They really, you know, uh, simplified that down and the way that like bus stops and airports and all that stuff and work it's it's all very different subways you kind of just place them down you don't actually have to build subway uh lines in between subway stations utilities it's just power again kind of like SimCity. this plays a lot like SimCity classic come to think of it which you know it's not it's not the worst thing in the world i, I have a different appreciation for this kind of gameplay i think than i imagine a lot of people do and since i played this as a kid i was a lot more forgiving of gameplay choices that are probably that probably seem uh bad these days one thing that is neat about this is the fact that each sim has sort of basically their own life you know they if i if i just follow this person he goes to a venue uh, dave seagrave here let's speed this up a little bit chills at the botanical garden and then he goes home eventually and then the next day they go to work it's all very you know it's nice it's a very predictable kind of thing where i believe that each sim stays existing they are their own entity I do think that it's also, that's probably a big reason that it starts to chug on systems after a while, is the fact that each sim does exist. And when you have a, a city of 18 people, that's not too bad. When you have a city of, I don't know, just to put a number out there, say like 200, or like I have in some of them, over a thousand, 
it can get pretty taxing on systems, especially systems in 2008. The thing about SimCity societies is it always felt like a much more playful take on city building. Uh, definitely didn't take it nearly as seriously. Which... There's upsides and downsides. It means that it has a really nice cartoony aesthetic, which is fun. But if you just wanna, if you wanna build a city, if you wanna, you know, create a metropolis of some sort, then you're, it's kind of lacking. It's very lacking in that aspect because you're very limited by the sort of, you know placing down individual buildings and all that jazz. I think the big issue I have with SimCity Societies is it feels like it's hard to make a city that looks good. Um, I don't know if it's just me. I'm sure there are people that can make cities that look good, and I'm sure if I really tried, I could probably make it work, but it's just... it can be a real pain. Like. I can make a city that functions, I can make the most productive city in the world, but that doesn't mean that it looks good. See, and the, I mean, and the, actually the game does look pretty good. When you have the settings higher on, hi, when you have the settings higher up, it does look really nice. Like, it has a nice little cartoony aesthetic. Uh, this was well into EA's whole, you know, Sims thing, when the Sims had already taken off and they were really big. As you can see, they talk in simlish and any anything that has text on it is written in simlish if I can make this electric billboard here so they were already well into their whole you know sims thing and that's where they really went with sim city societies I will say though one of the bigger issues that this game suffers from is that it can get kind of boring uh, if you're not really in the mood to play it. Some games, even if you're not in the mood, you can still kind of get hooked into it. Like, that's how I feel about 3004 sometimes. But with societies, it's just... It's a little dull. You can really see the lag there when I, when I do this. Because it's trying to render everything. I just can't. Because the bottleneck is actually in the software somewhere, uh, not the hardware. Which is why, even to this day, uh, it just runs like garbage. If you put just a little too much pressure on the on the game. I want to show you guys another city, a much bigger city, and just show you what it can look like and also how it affects the computer when you have a lot of stuff going on. But first, I do want to try and build up some tourist stuff. The neat thing about tourism in this game is that it offers income not on the weekdays. Because this game runs on a week schedule, as the rest of the world does, the Sims, for the most part, don't work on Saturday and Sunday, meaning you don't make money on the weekend. And that can be a little annoying, because you have to plan for that to have enough money in the bank throughout the weekend, but it also means that you need to look for other sources of income, i.e. tourism. And one of the ways to get tourists is to just build a bus stop, and they'll just come in through the bus stop. For sims that are visiting your city, you need different types of venues. You need um, places that they'll visit, you need places that they can stay, and each place that they can visit has a specific cost for them to go to and you make money whenever they visit that place. It's a pretty basic system, but it's also one that can that actually does have a fair bit of variability in it because you have all these different types of travelers and you can really kind of build it to your heart's content what kind of city you want to build. Um, you can build a very heavily tourist city. I've done that before. Not a whole lot of people living in it, just a ton of tourists. Or you can really just ignore tourism altogether Okay, so I'm stupid, and the bus stop cannot bring in visitors, so, uh, I'm sorry bus stop, you have to go. Taxi stand, that's what it does, that's, that's the one, not bus stop. There we go, we got our first traveler. So they'll come, and they will, let's see if I can find them. 
burnout. Let's find a... There we go. And so they have a certain amount of money that they can spend a certain number of days in the city and then certain things that they want to do. And then they see whether or not they like the city when they're done. In, in the beginning, it doesn't make you a whole lot of money, but after a while it really... It can, it can start to add up and it can make you a lot of money really quickly. But yeah, honestly, I don't know. I really don't have that much more to talk about with this. Um, I could keep playing it, but I don't want to, frankly. That's what it comes down to. I do like SimCity Societies, and I am going to show one of my older cities that I made probably about a year ago. But it can be a little dull for a while. The music also doesn't really help that. It's very solemn and somber, and it does depend on what kind of city you built. Because if you have an authoritarian city, the music is very, like, thumpy and, you know, scary. If you have a romantic or a fun city, then it's very, like, bouncy, but still. Societies does have an issue of not really uh, capturing my interest for very long. All right, so this is one of my older cities. Uh, it is a, I think it's like a consider a romantic city. I have a lot of creativity in it, and it, if I can actually show you guys the city, uh, it has a lot going on. It has a lot of buildings and everything. I like the camera movement. I forgot to mention that. I like that you have free roam on the camera. I just wish it didn't cause the game to just totally lag out. You can also uh, make things go away so that. You can just see your city. But yeah. So. This is what a city looks like. After you've spent a fair bit of time into it. And this is my tourist city. So. I have a lot of different tourist attractions over here. And I have racetracks. And beaches. And you know. A whole bunch of stuff. And this is probably one of my better looking cities. Because I do have so much going on and it kind of is spread out and my favorite part is the fact that there's just a big volcano in the middle which i didn't put that there it spawned there and so it was nice to put that there it does <laughs> destroy all these buildings around it whenever it erupts so that's not good but yeah it is what it is but if i play the game it yeah you can <laughs> tell that it it can definitely chug the system pretty pretty heavily yeah frame rate's probably not very high right now but yeah i mean like i said i really don't have that much more to say about it it's a fun game definitely not like the other SimCity games so if you're just looking for something like SimCity 4 SimCity 3000 or any of those uh, societies probably is not the game for you i would still recommend trying it out it's not expensive these days anymore and it does work on modern systems without trying. This is the CD version on a new computer. And I don't have any issues running it. Compatibility wise. So no issues there. It's just it does have flaws. And going into it, if you do want to enjoy the game, you need to understand that it is not SimCity 4. It is not SimCity 3000 or 2000. It's closer to SimCity Classic, if anything, which is fine. And I enjoy it, so you know, can't really ask for too much more from a video game. But with that, ugh. but with that, back to the video. At the end of the day, Sim City Societies was not a terrible game. I wouldn't even say it was a bad game. The problem wasn't that it was bad. The problem was that it strayed too far from the SimCity formula for everyone's liking. The formula that gamers had grown up to know and love over the past decades. One lukewarm game does not destroy a legacy though, but for Maxis or anyone to restore SimCity to what it once was, their next title would need to be fun, engaging, and remind everyone what the true meaning of SimCity is. And in the next episode, We'll talk about their attempt to restore that legacy with SimCity 2013. Thank you very much for watching. 
Leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and subscribe to my channel with notifications turned on to see more of my content. Leave a comment with your thoughts on this video or topics for the future, and if you're interested, I've also made plenty of other videos, so go check those out too. This has been Historical Hindsight, and I'll be seeing you soon.